Hi and welcome to another narration presented by yours truly, Cryptids Roost. Let's just take a moment's silence for all the haters, Karens and the trolls. That's enough. Be sure to check out the blooper reel at the end of the video which is then followed by the end screen where you will find more videos listed. So grab your coffee, sit back and enjoy the show. And don't forget, where fear is, happiness is not. The zombie apocalypse sucks. This awesome short story is written by Killerhawk1. Be sure to check out Killerhawk's very own YouTube channel as well. The link will be below. Daddies, mommies, brothers, sisters, it is a new era and a new age. Every new age brings something new. There's a new site that gives you all your quality jackets, joggers, shoes, bags, hoodies and lots more. Matenzi.com Check them out today and I bet you won't regret patronising with them. And you will definitely demand more. It's Matenzi today, Matenzi tomorrow and Matenzi forever. 100% perfection. Remember to use the code XYZ for a 10% discount. This is some old bullshit. I tell you what, this here zombie apocalypse ain't living up to what it was supposed to be. Nothing ain't going right and everything's happening at the worst possible time. First, it had to happen when I was back home in Texas visiting for a spell. Second, it had to be smack dab in the middle of the hottest summer on record. Third, and if that ain't already bad enough, them zombies had to be runners. Not shamblers, but runners. And them some bitches are fast too. I was like everybody else. I played the games, watched the movies, and never missed an episode of the TV shows. I fantasised about the day them zombies would show up and bite the shit out of everyone. Especially all of them some bitches at the credit card companies. I was so sick of them bill collectors harassing me like a bunch of old buzzards. I couldn't answer my phone without using my fake foreign accent. Da haro. Da, he no here. What do you expect? Da, he no live here no more. He moved to other place. You call here no more. Eventually, they caught on to my ruse. But, you know, I was getting to a point in my life where I wanted to be a more better person. More sensitive and such. You know, I wanted to be more like Owen Wilson. So I took the very next call and was polite as I could be, and that deck collector was still all condescending to me. He said, Mr. Swanson, you need to be responsible with your finances. When can we expect payment on the balance due on your account? I was like, you can expect payment anytime you like. How about this? Why don't you pick a date? and we'll both get to be surprised on that day when you still ain't got your money. I might could be more like Alec Baldwin. He's nice and all, but he still keeps a temper to himself. Nope, this zombie apocalypse ain't nothing like it should be. There ain't no fully stocked grocery stores just waiting to be plundered. There ain't no running water, no lights, no food, no guns. Shit, even the pets have turned on us. The other day I saw this old man get his ass kicked by a chihuahua. A chihuahua. Yep, there ain't no stashes of guns. No super smart science folks discovering some obvious cure from a houseplant that's been staring back at them this whole time. There most definitely ain't no pockets of civilizations waiting with open arms to take in a prodigal son who's come wandering in from the wilderness. None of that happened. I always imagined that I would be this 
badass lone road warrior who wandered place to place getting into adventures and such. My pistols and my shotgun would be my only companions. Oh, and a sword. I'd want a sword too. I'd carry it on my back like He-Man done did in them cartoons I was fond of when I was a young'un. Oh, Mama hated them cartoons. One time she caught me watching one after school and she howls like a goddamn screech owl. Sweet Jesus, why don't that man got no clothes on? And why do all them girls look like whores of Babylon? I count my blessings to this very day that she never got a good look at what them Thundercats were wearing. Poor Mama, bless her heart. I had to put her down myself, but she's in a better place now. She's up in heaven with Jesus, bumming cigarettes off of St. Peter in front of them pearly gates. So it was during my annual obligatory visit to the farm when the shit done hit the fan. I didn't know what I was going to do with Mama. She really was in no shape to be evading hordes of ravenous zombies and such. There ain't no nice way to put it, but she done definitely let herself go in the past few years. My Aunt Sissy said that she got so big they were afraid for her life every time she sat in her favourite rocking chair. They went through at least two porch cats before they decided to do something about it. Poor little bastards. They had to reinforce that old chair with lug nuts just to support her big ass with any level of confidence. She told everyone that Dr. Harris said her weight gain done come from a glandular problem. <laughs> glandular problem, I said. Mama, the only gland you have problems with is your saliva gland. <laughs> but honestly, she did have a weight problem. She could not wait to eat. <laughs> I should have been one of them professional joke tellers. Well, we were about to hightail it out from the farm when that girl from up yonder showed up on our front porch. What was her name again? Jenny. Yeah, Jenny. That real sweet girl with the fucked up eyes. It was a damn shame too, because it was next to impossible to have a serious conversation with that girl. I tell you, she was so bug-eyed, she looked like a big old bullfrog wearing eyeshadow. She had this one eye that was normal, but the other one would do whatever the hell it wanted to. Damn, I dared anybody to try and converse with her normal like and not get a serious case of the heebie-jeebies. You couldn't tell if she was looking at you or looking at your boots. You believe me, that's mighty distracting when a fella's trying to organise his thoughts proper like. I did hear though that eye of hers could see around corners too, just like magic. But I ain't one to gossip, so y'all didn't hear that from me. Oh, she used to babysit for all them tailor kids, but they let her go after only one night. I heard it was going real good and all, until that crazy eye of hers got to zipping and zapping this way and that. Well, it damn near scared the living bejesus out of them kids. You could see kids diving out the window, busting down doors and crashing through walls just to get away from her. Although I reckon there was some good to come out of all that. For that night forward, there was no problem disciplining them kids. All you had to do was say, If you don't mind me, I'm going to get old Jenny to come stare at you all. What the hell was I talking about? Oh. We came out of the house and there was little Jenny. She was all dirty and tore up like she had a run-in with a pack of old pissed off coyotes. The three of us locked eyes. It felt like we stared each other down for eternity. One bloodshot eye stared at Mama and the other one fixated on me. Well, more like in general location of my left elbow, but I understood her intent. Well. Whatever goes on in their heads, I could tell it was working overtime, trying to decide which one of us would taste better. Not to be insensitive or nothing, 
but it wasn't really a difficult decision if you were looking for more bang for your buck. It didn't matter how long you've been dead, you can tell the difference between a snack and a banquet. A low growl began to emerge from the girl. It got louder and louder. Then she charged at Mama. What happened next, I swear, on my daddy's grave is the honest truth. If I'm lying, then rattlesnakes don't like to shake their rattles. Little Jenny jumped on top of Mama and they crashed to the ground. She then bit down on Mama's throat, then... Then out of the blue, she stopped. She looked up at me. Well, kind of, but I've already sufficiently beat that horse to death. She had this look of confusion. No, more like bewilderment. She sniffed at the bloody mess she made of my mama. She smacked her lips a couple of times, like she was tasting something peculiar, and finally made a face like she had just tasted the nastiest thing to ever exist on God's green earth. The look of revulsion that spread across her face almost made me bust out laughing. Then it hit me. I knew that face. I knew it very well. Mama had given Miss Jenny NyQuil face. You know, that face you make after drinking that green shit for a cold. That got me thinking. After all this time, you'd think they would have come up with something better than nasty green death flavour. Cherry tastes like shit too. Anyways, that gave me the opportunity to gather my wits about myself and I pulled out my handgun. I aimed it real careful like at the face that was now sticking its tongue out and gagging. Before I could pull that trigger, I thought to myself, I knew it, I knew it. That old woman was so mean, if anything ever tried to eat her up, it would either spit her out or curl up and die. Mama was pretty much done in. I made sure it was permanent. She was a good woman and I knew she would want to keep her dignity, even in death. It's the least I could do, because truth be told, you all know there ain't nothing more pathetic than when a fat zombie tries to run you down. And I hope you all enjoy the blooper reel. Third, and if that ain't already bad enough, them zombies had to be sh- There ain't no- Yep, there ain't no stashes of guns, no super smart science folks discovering some obvious cure from a house plant that's been staring back. I always imagined that I would be this badass. I'd carry it on my back like He-Man done did in his... I count my blessings to this very day, she never got a good look at... She told everyone that Dr. Harris said her way to gain... Well, we were about to hightail it out from the farm when that girl from up yonder showed up our on our... For that night... <laughs> hey family, please be so kind as to throw punch the like button and smack the ass of the subscription button as well. And remember to choke hold that notification bell and then select all. That way you'll receive all notifications each time I upload a new video. And by subscribing you'll be the first to see all of our new spooky creepypasta stories. A very big thank you to Killerhawk1 for allowing me to narrate this awesome story. Make sure to check out Killerhawk One's Creepypasta fandom page for more brilliant stories as well. Also be sure to check out their very own YouTube channel also. Be sure to check out the Killerhawk One playlist here for more of their stories that I may have already narrated. I would just like to say a very big thank you to all of the authors that I have worked with and all the ones that I will work with in the future. So thank you all, my brothers and sisters. And why not 
hashtag cryptids roost in your comments. A quick thank you to all of my cryptids roost community family too. We are now well on our journey to 1000 subscribers. So please spread the word and help us to grow and expand. If you would like to support the channel and help make us grow, you can buy me a coffee with your donations, big or small, to buymeacoffee.com. You can also support us at Ko-Fi and BitChute. You can also follow us via our Facebook group, Twitter and Instagram. You can support us and donate via paypal.me slash cryptidsroost. All relevant links will be below. And don't forget to check out the end screen, see above. That will also list some more videos in my back catalogue. Take care everyone, and I hope you all have a wonderful and peaceful night. And don't forget, where fear is, happiness is not.